What's up, guys, and welcome to another edition of Market Marauders Beating the Market. One trade at a time. If you're Market Marauders Investment Channel, helps you to find the best deals in the market. If that's something you're interested in, make sure you smash that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It definitely helps the YouTube algorithm promote the videos. All right, so I'll be jumping into a uh, topic talking about basically how to trade pharmaceutical stocks. So pharmaceutical stocks are <clears throat> basically any company around the pharmacy niche. Uh, they're big pharmaceutical stocks. They're small pharmaceutical stocks, but they do not behave the same way as regular stocks do. So if you want to jumpstart uh, on the path to trading medical stocks uh, or pharmaceutical stocks, this is one of the things that you need to know. Uh, there is an FDA calendar out there. So if you go to BioPharm, uh, catalyst.com slash calendars it'll give you the pharmaceutical or FDA calendar date uh, so it basically goes through the different companies it shows their ticker uh, it shows the price uh, it shows the stage that they're at the different catalysts and the days that it's supposed to go through the uh, approval process or what stage and approval uh, that it currently is so if you're familiar with you no know, medical stocks as you know or pharmaceutical stocks you know that Different catalysts perform different, so people may say, you know, how do people know when different companies are going to give approval or get approval? How do you know different trials that are going on with different companies? You know, how do you know all this different stuff that's going on? The way you know is you can go to the FDA calendar. So they have the different stocks right here. Uh, you can track them that way. Um, and, you know, if there's some that you like individually, you can track them that way as well. Um, also, one of the things that I think is key uh, when looking at pharmaceutical stocks is understanding the terminology. So just from, you know, looking at the surface, most people won't know what PDUFA equals e actually means or what phase one means or phase two means. Uh, there's definitely a disconnect between the financial community and the medical community. So for me, I'm not in the medical profession, but I do trade stocks. So in order to understand how to trade stocks better, I want to know these terms and understand how uh, to figure out what these different stages mean and how I can apply them to my trading. So going into uh, just one, uh, this is on Investopedia. I just typed in phase one. What does that mean? And Investopedia is a good source that gives you a lot of good information on how to um, look at different catalysts. If there's something you don't understand, you could search it. It's usually on Investopedia and they have pretty good takeaways on how you can apply that to your investing um, and basically boost your investing. So the name of the game in investing is get more information. Uh, the more information you have, the better informed decision you can have, the more due diligence you can do to make a more informed decision and lock in those profits. So a key takeaway from phase one trial uh, is that a phase one trial is the first phase of a clinical trial overseen by the CDER and is meant to test the safety of a new drug by establishing its side effects. Approximately 70% of drugs submitted for phase one trials make it to phase two, uh, which that is definitely a good metric to look at. The result of phase one on a company's stock price are muted as the probability of success is built upon the valuation. The clinical trial process begins after the research and development or the R&D of the new drug and consists of four phases. Clinical trials are consistent or are costly and it is estimated that a phase one trial itself can cost between 1.4 million to 6.6 .6 million dollars. So these are things to not be, you know, taken lightly. If someone puts something into phase one trial, that means that there's a huge backing financially behind it. And they really believe in this drug uh, or in this uh, actual clinical trial going all the way through. Um, so this is just part of the process uh, as far as, you know, going back to what is PDUFA. I actually looked that up on Wikipedia. It's Prescription Drug User Fee Act. Now, I know Wikipedia is not the best source to find information, uh, but it'll do for just vaguely explaining what this is. Uh, so the Prescription Drug User Fee Act, or PDUFA, uh, was a law passed in the United States Congress in 1992, which allowed the Food Drug Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, to collect fees from drug manufacturers to fund a new drug approval process. The act provided the FDA uh, was entitled to collect a substantial application fee from drug manufacturers at the time of a NDA or new drug application 
or biologics license application or BLA was submitted uh, with those funds designated for use of use only in the center of drug evaluation and research or CDER, which was in that uh, thing that I mentioned earlier, or the Center for Biologics Evaluation Research, CBER, Drug Approval Facilities. So just in this small little article, we've gotten a definition of multiple uh, things. So at the beginning, you know, when talking about this different, this company, uh, you know, there's a lot of things on here that are like, what does that actually mean? But the further you dig into it, the more information you actually get to find out about uh, the different drugs and the different names of them. Another good source uh, that I would say is to go on here. Um, this is um, the FDA.gov slash drug slash drug approval and database. So it's basically a glossary. Uh, it helps you to find what different things mean. So ANDA number uh, explains what that is. Uh, BLA, which we just talked about earlier, but this is the official uh, government website that explains what they are. So with all that being said, um, I actually compiled a, compiled a list of some stocks that I think everyone should be looking at if you're jumping into the pharmaceutical niche. Um, and these are all based around vaccines. So if you know, uh, we're currently in the U.S. going through an election, but vaccines is definitely one of the keys worldwide that everyone is looking at. So I believe that vaccine stocks is definitely something that, you know, everyone should consider putting in their portfolio, not telling you to put it, not telling you not to put it, but I'm just saying consider looking at it for your watch list, just see how they behave. Um, now, this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, uh, but this is just what I personally look at uh, when looking for stocks in the pharmaceutical niche. So the first one, uh, I'm going to have some from wild ra wide range. So if you look at the top, these are a little more pricey, but if you go towards the bottom, there are some cheaper alternatives. So I know everyone's price point is different. Everyone's um, different, has a different budget and different risk management. Uh, so some stocks may be you know, more expensive to other people. Some stocks may be, you know, cheaper to other people. So I tried to give a range and variety um, and a range of catalysts on why I chose these different stocks. So the first one we start off with ticker sign PFE, and that is for Pfizer. Uh, if we look, they ended the week at $35.55. Going to some background information on them. Uh, just going to read some of the pre press releases. So they actually got uh, FDA grant, a priority review for their EMA uh, acceptance regulatory submission uh, of one daily JAK1. So I have no idea what that is, um, but they're getting FDA approval, which means, you know, they're continuing to produce more and more um, vaccines and uh, actual pharmaceutical things that are getting approval. So going into one of the main catalysts that, you know, I have them on my watch list for is definitely their partnership with BioNTech for their new um, pandemic or vaccine. So they have a vaccine candidate that they're trying to produce um, and it's with a company called BioNTech. And I believe that the more updates they get on this, the more you know exposure they get, the better this company is going to be, and the higher the price is going to be. So that's why I have this uh, on my list. Next uh, company that is in the vaccine niche as well um, is Moderna. So Moderna had their trial paused, um, but I definitely believe that they are a hopeful in you know making more data uh, and continuing their trial with the uh, pandemic vaccine. Uh, so. They closed the week at 67.50. Also bear in mind at the time of this video, this is the price that it was. So when the market opens on Monday or when the market opens in general, uh, this price will be different. So going to some background information on them, uh, Moderna partners with uh, Takeda and the government of Japan to supply 50 million doses of mRNA vaccine. Uh, so that's basically their vaccine. It's called mRNA1273. Um, and then UK Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency begins rolling review of Moderna's mRNA uh, vaccine against the pandemic. So that's the same one, the mRNA 1273. Uh, so they're basically getting theirs reviewed by Japan and reviewed by the UK, uh, which is good news for the company as a whole. That's why I have them on my list because the more updates uh, that come from there, if it's positive news, it will make the stock go up. 
Going to the next one, we have AstraZeneca, which has been in the news as well. Uh, they ended the week at $50 even. Uh, going to some background information on them, just going to read the press releases. This is all public information. Just Google the company's name and press releases, and you can find the same information as well. Um, they have a phase three trial um, that they was talking about uh, chronic kidney disease. Um, they're also in the vaccine niche as well. I think that their uh, candidate got paused. But these are some of the other things the company is doing. So just looking at the company, I don't choose these just because they're vaccine stocks, even though, you know, vaccine stocks is the main reason why they're on the list. But I think that other things that they're doing in the company, the company as a whole, the direction that they're moving, their leadership, their management makes me put these on my list. So going into um, the next one, and this is for alternative cheaper option. Uh, if anyone's looking at it, it's HTBX, and that is for Heat Biologics. Go to some background information on them. Uh, we can see back in September, they said that the CEO would participate in a virtual panel, uh, which they're having new approaches uh, to the pandemic with hidden breakthroughs. Um, that article came out all the way in September. So if we look, the stock is slightly starting to go up. But I think once you get an update on that, and I think it's overdue for an update on that, especially considering we're going into November, and we went all the way in October without getting an update, I think in November we'll definitely get an update on that uh, to see what the company is actually doing uh, to combat that or to um, have new research for the pandemic itself. But I think once that research comes out or once that data comes out from what they were doing involving the pandemic, I think the stock uh, will be a candidate to go up even further. Lastly, I want to go into VXRT. Um, they ended the week at $4.92. Uh, so not too bad, not too high of a price, uh, below the $5 price. So I'll still consider them a penny stock, just like HTBX. Uh, but they ended at $4.92, uh, still bearish uh, on here. But going to some background information on them, uh, I'm going to say that, you know, in the 14th of October, uh, so about midway through October, they had a positive hamster uh, trial. So they basically tested on hamsters uh, for an oral vaccine for the pandemic, um, which was good research. Um, and then it says they announced dosing of the first subject in their phase one clinical trial of their vaccine. Um, so it's an oral tablet. So I think it's a very different approach to uh, a lot of the other companies. A lot of other companies that I've seen, it's a uh, shot, but this is an oral tablet version. Uh, so even if they don't come up with a you know, a cure uh, first, I think people would rather take an oral tablet uh, opposed to taking a shot any day. So um, I definitely am keeping that on my radar, especially considering they're involved in the pandemic niche and their stock is only $4.92. Uh, so, you know, looking for more information on them, you can use the FDA calendar uh, to track updates on them to see what they're doing uh, and how they're going to perform moving forward. Uh, but that's just a way to look and how I would trade pharmaceutical stocks. Uh, so good luck to everybody trading out there this week. I uh, hope everybody's able to lock in some profits. Make sure you check out the community tab for plays uh, that I have for this week as far as options are concerned uh, and earnings are concerned. Uh, drop a comment down below if these videos help you, if you're getting value from these videos. That's my whole goal is to get value uh, back to everybody uh, because I know these are things that I would have loved to know uh, before I started trading or as I started trading and putting more capital of my own, because I am a retail trader, uh, putting more of my capital up. These are just videos that I would like to, you know, know how to do. So if you have a suggestion of a video or a topic that you would like me to go over, uh, drop in the comment section down below and I'll try to make a video about it. The whole goal of the channel is to just uplift people, uh, give you more insight on how to trade, uh, because I believe investing is definitely the best way to grow your wealth and your income for your family. Uh, so good luck to everybody out there and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.